There are basically three ways to publish your website to the internet using 90 Second Website Builder. In this video, I'll talk about method number one, which is the most common and certainly most convenient way to publish your website. So here I have a demonstration website. We're calling it Drag and Drop Site Builder. This is just a demo uh, account. And I'm going to move the camera so you can see we're working with a number of pages in this website. And we're going to publish them to the internet. So of course, to publish, you need a hosting account. If you don't have a web hosting account, you'll need to get one. And of course, you need a domain name hosted on that hosting account. So in this demonstration, we're using the domain name dragandropsitebuilder.com. We've got it hosted, and we're ready to upload it, or publish it, or send it to the server. Well, to do that with this method in 90 Second, we simply click the Publish button, which is right here. I can also go to the File, Publish option. It's another way to do it. That's the same thing, though, as clicking this Publish button. Here's what happens. A dialog box comes up called the Publish Website dialog box, and it allows me to create a connection to my server. Now, I only have to do this one time for this website. Once I've created this connection, from here on out, every time I want to update my website or publish it to the internet, I would simply click the Publish button here and be done. But let's see how we set that up. Now, I've already set up my connection, and the way I did that was I clicked Add, and I filled in the blanks. So let me show you what I did, because I'm going to click the one that I set up, and we'll go to Edit, and here's how I filled in those blanks. First, I chose what type of connection I want. There's two types. I can publish locally, which means I want to publish my files to my desktop and manually upload them later. Or I can choose FTP server. Your software may say the word remote here. It's the same thing. The point is I'm creating a remote or FTP connection to my web hosting account by selecting this. The description is just for my sake so I can quickly see which website this pertains to. The URL, that's obvious, that's the domain on which this website's going to be stored. The rest of this information you get from your web hosting account. So the host name, which is the IP address of your hosting account you get from your host. Now if your host doesn't give you an IP address, that's fine. Sometimes they want you to use this protocol, FTP yourdomain.com. So in my case, I'd use ftp.dragandropwebsitebuilder.com. And that would certainly work too. But if your host also gives you an IP address, use that. That's actually usually better, a little faster connection. But either way, the ftp.yourdomain.com or the host IP name, IP address will be fine. In the port box, 21 is the case 99.9% .9 of the time. If for some reason your web host wants you to upload through a different port, they will certainly tell you. But most of the time, it is port 21. The username is the username to your FTP account. It's usually the username to your cPanel or just your basic username to your web hosting account. And of course, it also has a password. Finally, you're going to tell 90 Second the name of the folder to publish to. And again, I will say 99% of the time, your web host will want you to publish to a folder called the public HTML. And you have to put it in this way, forward slash public underscore HTML. Now, in the case of some uh, web hosts, they don't use the name public HTML. They might use a folder called www or http docs or something similar, they will tell you. But in most cases, a public HTML folder is what you're going to want to put in there. Again, find out this information from your host. All of the information in this section will, you will get from your web hosting provider. If you're using Blackwire hosting, you'll use the uh, IP address for the host or the FTP dot whatever port 21, your username and password for your cPanel, and you'll use a uh, remote folder forward slash public HTML. Blackwire hosting uses very conventional settings. And then, of course, you can, you can leave the passive mode checked. That's fine. Once you have this set up, you don't have to do this stuff again. Like I said, you save this connection, and you'll always use it every time you publish or update your website. You can test this connection by clicking the Test button. And 90 Second tells us we have successfully connected to the server, the username, password, everything's correct, so we're ready to go. So I can actually close out of here, publish my website, and be done. But before we do, I want to show you a little extra feature that's fairly new to 90 Second Website Builder. Now, you don't have to do this, but for those of you that want to dig a little deeper, this is kind of important information. Again, you don't need to know this part, but you might want to. 
and that is this Explore button. You have to remember that 90 Second Website Builder has a built-in FTP application. So when I click the Explore button, what 90 Seconds is going to do is it's going to actually log into my server, as you can see it's doing right now. It just connected to my hosting account, and it opened it up so that I can look and see what's going on on my hosting account and the server. And this is what's on my hosting account. These are all server folders, directories, and files that are system folders that my web host has provided. And you can see in the middle of this uh, set of files is that folder called the public HTML. This is where websites are stored. In fact, if I double click on it, we can go inside that folder. So we've just now entered the public HTML folder. And as you can see, there's nothing in it except what is called the CGI bin. That's where you would store some scripts and all web hosts provide a CGI bin for you to use if you want to. But other than that, this big blank area tells me there's nothing on my website. There's no files stored. This is a brand new hosting account. I haven't uploaded anything. But by exploring this way, I can see that that's true. Just by clicking that explore button, I've sort of taken a peek under the hood, so to speak, of the server that I'll be storing my website on. So I'm going to close this window and go back to where we were. Again, you don't have to explore. And if that intimidated you because it was too much information, don't worry about it. You don't need to know that. I want to leave it in the video for those of you who are curious about how the FTP works. Again, once these settings are set, the remote and the information uh, from the web host were all ready to go. All I have to do is click OK. Let's cancel out of this and start over. Now that you know how it was set up, let's say I've just finished making my website. I Maybe I've made some changes to it. I've added something. Maybe I've created another page, whatever, and I'm ready to publish. Here's how I put my website online. I simply click the Publish button. I select the location that I'm going to publish to, remember this is preset, we just looked at it, and I can decide to publish my entire website, just the page I've selected, just pages that have changed, etc. So I can make that decision. I can also decide to publish everything, or just the HTML files, those are the pages, or maybe just the changes, change files, etc. Now since this is the first time that I've published this website to my empty hosting account, I'm going to publish the entire website and all of the files. And to do that, I click Publish. 90 Second Website Builder tells me exactly what it's doing, that it's logging in, and then it's uploading these files. Now since this is going to take a few seconds, I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, I've turned the video back on because it's almost done. There it is. It just finished publishing. So since it was the first time, it takes longer because it's putting everything up there. I'm going to scroll back up so you can see what happened. All of these items, because I have a pretty big website here, I've got a lot of pages. In fact, it's 80 files. Some of those files are pages. Some of those files are images, etc. All of those images and files, my entire website, have now been published to the Internet. Now I can go to my browser, open it up, and go to drag and drop uh, sitebuilder.com and look at it. Or... I got a little shortcut right here. Let's look at it online. I just click that link and here we are. This is my website online. It was just published to my hosting account. That simple. Now the next time that I publish, let me close this out. The next time that I publish, I might not want to publish the whole website. I want, might want to, let's say I make a change and I wanted this over here. Now when I go to publish my website, I might say, well, let's just publish this selected page only. Or I could say, Let's just publish the changed files only. And it would just publish the files that have been changed. As you can see, you can make that decision every time you publish and uh, do whatever's faster or more convenient for you. But the point is, once you've set up your connection, you never have to do it again. Every time you want to make a change, it's literally a point and click away. So you would you would make your changes to your website. And of course, you, by the way, remember to save those changes. Then I would click Publish and publish and in which you make those changes and that's it. So the first time is a little intimidating because you got to fill out all that FTP stuff but once you do you're ready to go. That's the best and fastest way to publish with 90 Second Website Builder.